Well, we don't know yet the motive of the Pittsburgh High School stabbings at this point, but we do know that past school massacres across the country have stemmed in part from bullying, and it doesn't just stop in schools. It happens in the workplace as well. You might be subjected to bullying in the boardroom, but you may not even realize it. So our career expert, Kim McNicholas, joins me this morning, along with body language expert, Carol Goman, to talk about just how prevalent bullying in the workplace is. Yeah, well, 13.7 million Americans are actually being bullied in the workplace. I mean, it's amazing. It was a study that was done actually in, in 2010 by the uh, Workplace Bullying Institute. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's probably grown, you know, since then. But it's really the superiors that are doing it. Well, go figure. Sure. And it's not illegal, which was hmm. really, really surprising. surprising. Well, unless you're a part of, you know, a protected status group, such as gender, age, or, or race. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what I'm really wondering, Carol, is that in terms of bullying, how do you know when it does constitute bullying, you know, versus just being in a stressful work situation? I mean, even in a newsroom. Yeah, well, that's tough because tough bosses are tough on everybody. True. And usually True. they're tough, tougher <laughs> during a crisis. Yeah. And when the crisis is over, they kind of relax. Mm -hmm. A bullying boss targets only a few, and their bullying is relentless and ongoing. Hmm. And what does this look like? Well, Verbally, it's, mm -hmm. you know, yelling, screaming, throwing tantrums, it's insulting. Sometimes it's excluding people from really important meetings or important pieces of information. I mean, it's spreading rumors, it's starting gossip. It's really destructive and, and damaging psychologically. But you're a body language expert. What, what sort of body language can we look for to go, oh, oh wow, you're a bully? Well, glaring, staring, or sometimes ignoring. If you're saying something to me and I totally dismiss what you're saying by looking around the room or checking my watch or looking up Marty, that's really a form of bullying that people hmm. don't realize. Also, finger pointing, of course, that kind of gesture, and touch. Touch, which can be wonderful, but a bully uses touch either to intimidate, like that bone-crushing handshake, or even to patronize, that pat on the head. Hmm. And of course, infringing on your territory. Bullies get right in your face. Do you find that bullies will attack, for lack of a better yeah. term, attack one gender versus the other? No. I think that uh, it's fairly equal opportunity when it comes to bullying. Mm -hmm. And it isn't only men that are bullies, of course. Women in the workplace are just as bully-ish <laughs> as men are. Yeah. So they can bully. They can bully other women. They can bully men. Mm -hmm. One woman that I worked with was a, a real problem, and she bullied a single man on her team. And so, you know, so bullying is happening happening in the workplace. You can't really go up to your supervisor and say, you're being a bully. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could get fired. And I mean, if you really care about getting fired. Um, so how should you handle that type of situation? How do you handle a bully, especially if they're a supervisor? Well, you know, a lot of people don't handle it. They simply walk off the job, which is one of the reasons why bullying is so expensive to an organization, because people just quietly leave the company, and they don't even tell you on the exit interview why they're going, hmm. because they don't want to burn bridges. Yeah. So the first thing, if you're going to stay on the job, is you have to know that you're being bullied, that it's not you, it's not your work, it's not your performance, it's about the bully and his or her need for dominance and power and control. Mm -hmm. The second thing, and I found out after writing about this, I got so so many emails from people who've been bullied said the thing that I hated about myself the most was I didn't stand up initially. Yeah. So stand up right away. You know, don't let it go on. When you talk about standing up, are you talking about standing up to the bully or are you saying I'm going to stand up by telling somebody in HR or, or something well, like Well, actually this? both. You, could, mm. you should document, of course, mm -hmm. and maybe tell a friend so that somebody knows, somebody you trust, and then if it continues, go to HR. But no, I'm talking about standing up to the bully, and it doesn't uh, have to be a confrontation necessarily. Mm -hmm. So say Kim were over my shoulder and I was working on something, and she was infringing on my space, I might just swivel around and say, was this something you were interested in? <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't have to be stop that bullying. So yeah. it's almost like you're letting them know, hey, I, I, I've got your number. Exactly. But, but you're not being, um, you know. Confrontation. Exactly, confrontational. Yeah. So, so, so it's not standing up and getting getting verbal and getting possibly violent or something like that. It's, no, it's, you you want to stay very professional. Yeah. You know that that's going to be your key. But you do need to confront in some way. Why? 
Why do you think it is that uh, bosses bully or some bosses bully? Because they can. Because they can? <laughs> yeah. No, literally, I think people get put into positions of power because they look authoritative, they look hard charging, they look at take control, mm -hmm. they're very good career oriented, and all those things are good. Mm -hmm. But bullies also lack empathy, and that's mm. the difference. They just seem to be immune to the suffering of the people around them. Yeah. And you just wrote this book, um, Everybody's Talking What We Say Without Words, and this is actually geared towards kids. Yes. And you mentioned empathy, and I, I'm curious if that's something that, you know, parents, it, bullying starts when you're a kid. And, and if you're a bully as a kid, you're going to grow up and be a bully in the workplace. So what can parents actually do now to prevent bullying in the workplace, but even starting out even in school? Well, yeah, you know, the University of Michigan did that study where they looked at self-reported students and their empathy levels, and they've been dropping for 30 years. The last yeah. 10 years they've plummeted. And one of the things that they say is because we're so wired electronically that we don't see each other's emotions when we react to it. So I think that by helping kids really understand body language, get back into those nonverbal cues, it really builds their empathy. Mm. And as they become more empathetic, let's hope there's less bullying on the playground because certainly bullying in school becomes bullying in the boardroom or the factory or the office as an adult. Yeah, you deal with it your whole life. Yeah. yeah. Carol, Kim, thank you so much for joining us and talking about this important topic. You're very thank welcome. You. And we'll be right back.